Okay, welcome to another Orbiter video. And in this little series I'm putting together, we're doing a comparison of some different methods for automatically landing at Brighton Beach on the moon. I'm using the exact same scenario on all these tests, and we're landing at the same landing pad just to make sure that everything is equal. In the previous video, we did two landings using an autopilot called Baseland Autopilot. So let me go ahead and switch camera views and take a look at those results really quick. Now, I have actually expanded this uh, spreadsheet a little bit compared to the previous version, and I'll go over that. So I added this column here that says altitude at BB, which is altitude at Brighton Beach. And what this column represents, this is the altitude that we would be at if we did nothing, you know, if we didn't do any deorbit maneuver, if we didn't do any landing of any kind. This is how high we would be when we passed over Brighton Beach. And I think this is an important number to know because from, you know, one flight to the next, if you're if you're lower than this, then all of your numbers are going to be at least a little bit better. So I think it's important to know what our altitude is, uh, what our altitude would have been above Brighton Beach if we didn't do anything. So what I did uh, was I uh, started up the scenario and then I just brought up the VOR VTOL, put it on Brighton Beach, and I just time warped forward until I was directly over top of Brighton Beach where my distance, uh, according to VOR VTOL, was the lowest. And then I paused the simulation and I, uh, well, actually when I went down to 0.1x on the time warp and I just watched my altitude and when, it, when I got as close to Brighton Beach as possible, that that's what that number is, 36.49. So again, that's if we do nothing. And again, in, in all of these starting scenarios, our DV is going to be the same. We're starting with 8,668. When we used Baseland Autopilot in its hover configuration, we uh, our ending DV was 6,532. So we used 2,136 DV in that configuration. When we did uh, BLA retro, which we used the main engines, we used 6,000, or our, rather, our ending DV was 6,590, so we used 2,078, uh, so this was a bit better. Not hugely better, but, uh, uh, but better. And then I added this column over here, which is like versus the best. So once we get all of our results, we will compare, this, this column will compare this result against whatever the very best was and see how much more fuel this used compared to the best. So currently this would be compared to this one, but we want to get all of our data in before we populate this column. Okay, so with all of that said, let me go ahead and switch camera views here and jump back into it. Okay, so let me go back to real time on the simulation. And the next test we're going to do is a BLA prograde, which will use the retro engines. So. Let me go ahead and bring stuff up here. So once again, let's take a look at burn time calculator, including our RCS. Uh, again, we have 8,668 meters per second. It's the exact same for all of them. So bringing up baseland autopilot, and once again, we're going to go to the right to select base. We're gonna go down, and this time we're going to select the prograde, which will use the retro engines. And then we're going to go down. Uh, Brighton Beach is already selected. So we're going to go down again. And we're going to go to the right to select landing pad 2 to keep that the same for every scenario. And again, we're going to go to the autopilot control of yaw, pitch, roll, and engines. And then we're going to engage the autopilot. Now I'm just going to warp time forward until our engine percentage gets up to 50%. And that's not going to happen until we're under 1,000 kilometers. So first of all, I'm going to watch that. Four, three, two, one, eight. I'm just coming down to 100 now. And once we're under that, in fact, we're at 45%, so I'm going to go back to real time because this ramps up quickly. And like I said in the other video, I want to make sure that when the control, uh, when the autopilot starts doing its maneuvering, um, it's in real time so that it's not trying to fight against more difficult time steps. So at 50%, it's going to get into position, and then we'll uh, press Control F2, do a little bit of time warp just to get through 
uh, just to get through the uh, <clears throat> the landing a little bit more quickly. And we're almost at 50%. And here it is. So I do notice that the maneuvering system for this autopilot, in my opinion, could definitely use some work because it, it thrusts the entire time it's maneuvering, and I, I'm 100% I'm positive that's inefficient. Okay, so that's done. Now I'm going to go ahead and press uh, Control F2, have this one available, but we can warp time forward a little bit longer here at 10. I think once we're at about 80%, I'll go back to one, actually 70%. So at 70%, I'm going to go to 1, and now I'm going to use a finer control over the time warp. So we should be able to get away with uh, 5 to 7 time warp with no problem. You can, I can tell it's very smooth at the moment. And just so that we don't spend an eternity taking these tests, I'm just using some time warp, and I don't think it'll affect anything. I'm going to go ahead and bring up the cool camera view so we can see outside a little better. That gives us a view right below us, which will uh, comes in a bit more handy in the other uh, some of the other scenarios. You'll notice in this one we can actually see where we're going, so it's not necessarily as useful for this particular for this particular one, but it's still interesting to see. And we're just a little ways out yet. Let's go ahead and go to the surface. So we can see how fast we're moving, we can see how high up we are. And yeah, one thing that this autopilot, uh, one thing that this program's doing that is definitely better is that as we are approaching the landing pad, you know, we're also losing altitude at the same time and that's more efficient. More efficient than, you know, coming to a dead stop 35 kilometers or something straight up and then falling and then having to use a ton of hover to to offset our descent rate so right away that's something that this one is doing better than the the when we did the main 5, engines 4, and as before once 3, we get the call out for landing gear that's when we'll turn on the APU leave it running and and put down the gear at that point. So we want to be really ready to go on that. You are cleared to land. So everything's still really smooth, 1, so we'll keep it at 3. 800, 700, 600, but now we'll go to real time, because we know we're going to get that call out really soon. 400, 300, warning, gear is There's up. the call out, control A. And G to put down the gear, and we'll just leave the APU running. So we're almost down. Gear down and locked. See our target right there. You can see here in our little camera view that we're coming up to landing pad 2. So we're almost straight up above now. So now it's going to start leveling out. 50, 40. 30, 20, 15, 10, 8, 7, Just six, a couple more meters to go. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Wheels, wheels stop. Okay, that's wheel stop. Let's turn off the APU immediately, bring up burn time calculator, and see how we did. Okay, so we have 6,772 meters per second remaining. 6,772 meters per second remaining. So let's take a look at how that fares with our other results so far. 6,772 remaining. That's a pretty significant difference uh, between, between this program and this program. Um, you can see each one of these has gotten slightly better in terms of how much Delta V was used overall. One other thing I did was I decided to expand how we use Pursuit MFD because Pursuit MFD also has three different configurations, although I don't think that's going to make much difference between the three. But I um, wanted to take a look at those as well. So, so far, BLA uh, Prograde position using the retro engines is the is the program to beat. 
So let's go ahead and switch camera views here. Uh, now I'm going to have to exit out Orbiter and exit out of the launch pad. Give it a second, relaunch the launch pad. And we're going to go back into that exact same scenario, which is XR2 at the moon. And before, before deorbit, I just renamed the uh, the file. I think in the first video it was called at deorbit. I just renamed it to before. Okay, switch camera views here. And once again, let's bring up burn time just to prove that everything is the same. There we are, 8,668. And if you look at the starting conditions of what orbiter looks like at the beginning of each one of these, you'll notice it's exactly the same. Let's go to Pursuit MFD. Let's do a landing. Brighton Beach is already selected. Let's select landing pad two. And uh, one thing I can point out, but let me get this going first. I had mentioned in my video that um, you have to be in INV mode because I was thinking that it, when you had the hover engines on versus the main engines that it basically the axis was incorrect and that was just wrong um, as I, as I tested it a whole bunch of times before I recorded that video and the only time it ever worked was when I had INV mode enabled however I found out after I posted the video that it was just because my timings were a bit wrong I was I was not giving um, the burn time start enough time and I essentially just as a result of my own impatience the it was only working when I had INV mode enabled so the point is that was wrong that was an incorrect statement you do not have to be in INV mode so we will not be in INV mode uh, we know that the burn time uh, is not going to do anything until or we know the autopilot's not going to do anything until 180 seconds so we're going to go to about 300 seconds and then we'll turn on the autopilot. So we're about 1,500, 1,300 and coming down. And here in just a few more seconds, we're going to turn on the hold. Come about right, about right here. So when we press hold, it's going to orient the vessel. And one thing I've noticed about Pursuit MFD that is definitely uh, better than what BLA is doing is the when it when the autopilot positions the vessel for the upcoming maneuver it doesn't burn DV the entire time because you'll notice like right now we're still at 8.668 meters per second so we've so far we've not even used one meter per second to reorient the vessel whereas I was noticing with BLA it would use between like 8 and 10 meters per second just to orient the vessel. So the this program's orientation uh, method is much, much more efficient. But ultimately, what we're looking for here is what is the lowest overall dV. So while this is better, is it necessarily better overall? That remains to be seen. So you can see it does take some time to orient into this position. So that's why I like to start that, you know, closer to like 300 seconds because, you know, it took, you know, 80 seconds just to get to this position and then it's going to go from this position to its final. So that took about somewhere between, uh, you know, two and, you know, around two meters a second to orient. So not bad, not bad compared to what BLA was doing. A little bit of time warp to get over to 180 a little faster. And then at 180, it's going to do its final uh, orientation. And then I'll press Control F2 so that we can do some time warp here once we get oriented. But the, uh, the method that this MFD is using to orient the vessel is, is definitely better. So we're coming up here, just another moment, we'll be at 90, and then it's going to stop orienting. Change the graph. Okay. So now we're going to go to about a 7 time warp. 
you know, five, seven, something like that. Uh, one thing I have noticed about this MFD is that it definitely takes longer to to do everything it needs to do. And because of that, I think it's basically being more careful, which would be good if you were a human inside of this XR2 and you, you know, <laughs> didn't want to be screaming for your, for your life, then it would be preferable. But um, in terms of efficiency, I think the carefulness of this MFD makes it less efficient in terms of DV usage. So while we have nothing to look at here, we'll go ahead and bring up our cool camera, switch over to that view, and we can see our target coming up now. And yeah, we'll just, uh, you know, we'll be patient. We'll give it some, you know, a little bit of time warp just to get th so it doesn't take quite so long. So the next order of business will be uh, turning on the APU and putting down the landing gear, but we'll wait until we get that call out. And I think that happens somewhere around um, like I think when it's just under 300, let me come out of time warp just a little bit, just as we get in a bit closer and I'm hearing more frequent ticks. We'll go down to five at this point. Five thousand. Four thousand. I guess another test we could possibly do would be to see how well 8, each test performs under like ten time warp. No more than ten, but just like two thousand. That's starting to get a bit slippy. Let me go down to three. You are cleared to land. Cleared to land. Yeah, once the MFD starts sounding like extra busy, that's when I feel like I need to dial down the time warp a little bit just to give it the best shot. Can I go down to two on the time warp? Okay, and... Go down to one and stay there now, because I know that callout's going to be coming really soon. Warning gear's up. APU on, landing gear down, and just like in the other test, we'll leave the APU on at this point until we're at wheel stop. And we can see in our camera view here that uh, we're coming in over the base. So we just have a few more seconds here until we'll be down. It's just a couple more seconds here until wheel stop. You can see landing pad 2, which is our target, coming into view right now. So now the autopilot's starting to completely level out, and now we're just moving forward very, very slowly. So we can dial in that 0, 0.0 position. And then we'll Information. drop straight APU down. Running. So yeah, this MFD definitely takes longer to to do what it does, which tells me that it must not be as fuel efficient as base yeah. land autopilot. Again, that might be an advantage, you know, if you're a pilot, if you're a human inside this thing, but. But I think the additional time that it spends Five, doing everything four, it does is costing it three, more DV. Two, so we're almost down. One. Okay. Wheels, wheels stop. So there's wheels down and wheels stop. So let's immediately turn off the APU. Let's bring up burn time calculator and see what we see how we're doing. So total DV plus RCS six thousand four hundred and eight. 6408. So let's uh, switch over here and let's put in that number. So, and that was when the, that was when this configuration was in close. So 6408. And yeah, right away we can see that it is using, 
it used the most DV so far. So we will uh, compare that to the best. But now it would be interesting to see, well, you know, what about these other two approaches that Pursuit MFD has? Are they going to be any better? Let's go ahead and switch camera views here. And uh, when we come back in the next part, we will run through Pursuit MFD in the next two modes and see if they do better. Uh, will, and if they do, will it be significantly better or just a little bit better? We'll find out when we come back. I will see you in the next video.